All right, good to spend a few minutes with former LSU offensive lineman Lloyd Cushenberry. Lloyd, appreciate your time today, man. Hope uh, hope you're healthy. Hope you're safe. Uh, everything good on your end so far? Yes, sir, man. Uh, no problem, man. It's good to be here. Everything's going good. So, you know, everything's well. well. Awesome. Good. Well, uh, let's talk a little draft prep. Um, obviously, like uh, like everyone else, you're dealing with uh, not ideal circumstances. Um, for you, it's as you're trying to prepare for the draft. Fortunately, you were able to get in a lot of uh, draft prep before everything shut down, uh, getting to participate in, uh, in the combine and obviously talk to a bunch of teams. Um, but kind of take me back through the beginning of this journey um, when you first got started and, and uh, going to the combine, talking to all the teams. What, what is, what's the biggest thing you've learned so far that you didn't anticipate? Yeah, you know, it started off at the Senior Bowl, you know, right after the National Championship that next week. I went to the Senior Bowl, and, you know, that was a long week. Uh, and, you know, between the Senior Bowl and all the combine training and going to the combine, you know, uh, I just learned, you know, you got to – you have to really love the game of football because it's long weeks, it's long hours, you know, uh, a lot of talking, losing your voice, doing doing all these interviews. But you got to love the game and, you know, just got to stay – appreciate it and embrace the whole process because I mean if you get if you get tired you know it can be long days long weeks but you know it'll all be worth it in the end. What's what's the feedback been from teams so far I, I assume mostly positive I think I saw an article or, or at least a link to an article where I mean they were talking about how your stock has just risen so much you've impressed teams with your IQ I think the 18 thing probably always um, is, yeah. is good for the the brand and for for teams when they're looking at you and probably helps with teams um, favoring you and, and moving you up their draft board. But what, what's the, the feedback you've heard from some of these teams? Uh, I mean, like you said, I mean, I've been trying to, you know, blow, blow teams away with my football IQ and just no, showing them that, you know, I have you know, a good knowledge of the game. And uh, I mean, I'm not really sure where I'll, what team I'll land at. You don't really know until, uh, you know, until that day, but you know, hopefully it's, you know, day one, maybe late first or early second round, you know, I land in a, a good spot. So we'll see. You know, feedback has been pretty good so far. And, uh, you know, the FaceTime meetings and all the interviews have been going pretty good. Every athlete in your position dreams of, of this moment um, that, you, that you're about to experience. But I think maybe I'm speaking out of hand, but I think every athlete, even though you dream of it, it almost doesn't feel real until until you yeah. get there. Going through this process, like, has it felt kind of like a dream or surreal that, you know, you here's Lloyd Cushenberry, a guy that signed with LSU at the last minute, and now four years later, like, you're about to be in the NFL. Is, is that kind of surreal? Yeah, man, it's it's definitely a blessing. Uh, and, you know, when you're going through it, you don't really think about it because you're just working so hard and you're just looking forward to the next thing, next goal. Uh, but, you know, just having this downtown now, I have been kind of thinking about everything, you know, my whole journey from – you know, little league to middle school, high school, all the way up until where I'm at now. It's you know, it's been a long journey, and it has been surreal. And it's just a blessing that you know God put put me in this position because uh, you know I, I dreamed of dreamed of this uh, growing up. You know, I dreamed of winning national championships, uh, going to the NFL draft. You know, it's just it's all it's surreal. It, it, I can't even put it into words. It's just amazing. Who are some of the guys that you've talked to in this process? Lean to one for advice. I mean, you've got a, a number of guys you can pick from, whether it's Jacob Hester, a fellow number 18 guy that spent time in the NFL, or offensive lineman. Ethan Postich has, has had a great career. Will Clapp's been, uh, been in the NFL for a couple years now. Um, you, there's certainly a lot of guys you could look to. Who are some of the guys that you've leaned on to this process? Yeah, it's really uh, been, you know, Ethan Postic uh, and Will Clapp, you know, as well, especially Postic. You know, he's been a guy that I looked up, looked up to, you know, my, since my freshman year, been a mentor to me. And, uh, you know, we got a few workouts in together. He has a house down in Baton Rouge. So, um, you know, I've been trying to just get as much knowledge as I can from him. I'm just trying to learn from him and just how to, you know, just really just trying to learn, you know, what I need to be ready for and how to be prepared for, you know, what to be prepared for when I walk into an NFL you know, facility. How about some of the other guys going through the draft process? Um, there's a bunch of you guys. We got a, we got a list yeah. of guys that we've reached out to. I think it's like 20 names that are – uh, that are involved, and I wouldn't be shocked if all 20 of you guys got picked. Um, who, who are the conversations? Who are the guys you're having conversations with about that? What are y'all talking about in, in these kind of days before the draft? 
Yeah, me, me, Damien, and Sadiq, uh, we usually work out together. Uh, we go run or um, try to do some some footwork or some O line drills. So we always, us three are always talking, uh, always in the group chat, trying to uh, make sure each, each, you know, each one of us is getting better or doing something to get better and stay ready. So, and we just all just, just waiting. You know, we don't, don't really know uh, what's going to happen, when's football going to be back. You don't know. So we all just trying to stay on each other, make each other better because, you know, once football does come back, it's not going to have, not going to be any excuses, you know didn't have a weight room or this was shut down, that was shut down. It's not going to be any excuses. You know, when they draft you, you know, they expect you to perform. So we're just trying to stay on each other and I just encourage each other every day. What is draft prep for you like in this kind of quarantine shutdown phase where, you know, you can't just go to the weight room like you normally would and you can't work out with 20, 25 guys. You've got to, you know, take care of your health and, and socially isolate and socially distance and all that stuff. How is your training changed? Have you emphasized the mental more? Have you done more, you know, cardio, body weight stuff? How have you kind of adapted to that? Yeah, it's pretty much all body weight stuff, a lot of push-ups, uh, crunches, sit-ups, a lot of abs, and uh, a lot of running. Uh, me and Damien, you know, did some running this morning. Um, and, you know, before everything got shut down, Coach Moffitt gave us the packet that they gave the players there. And it's basically a lot of workouts that you, know, you can do without weights. And, uh, it's a good workout. You know, by the end, by the time you finish with that, you feel like you just left the weight room. So I've been trying to do that in my living room and uh, trying to do a lot of running. Give Give me like an outline of what that that workout looks like. Like push ups, obviously, yeah. is in there. Maybe some planks or something. Like, what are some of the things you're doing? Yeah. Is there so anything in there that you hadn't done before? Uh, it's, it's everything we did at other shoe, but uh, it's basically like three rounds of like four workouts. So it's like three sets of 20 push-ups and then three sets of 20 dips and then three sets of 20 uh, sit-ups and a whole bunch of, it's three rounds of like four, four or five workouts uh, with 45 seconds rest in between. And it, it's, it, it's a whole workout. They get it out. Let's, uh, let's look back at the season a little bit. Cause it was obviously a, a special season. What, when did you know that this team was going to be different? was going to be special. Was it very, very early? Was it, you know, halfway through the season, when did it kind of click for you? Like, oh, we, we might win this whole thing. Yeah, so uh, I kind of felt that spring ball, I felt, you know, we could be pretty good, uh, especially offensively, the way we were moving the ball and executing on you know, against our talented defense. And then during fall camp, started to feel it even more, you know, how to, you know, how the way the offensive line started off in fall camp, we were rolling five days in a row, just, um, you know, dominating. And, uh, you know, once the season started, Texas game, uh, you know, we felt like, all right, we're in a hostile environment. We can if we can execute like that. You know, it's going to be pretty good. But uh, with, when I knew that I felt like we were going to win the national championship when it was the Friday night before the uh, Alabama game, and usually we split up offense, defense. And uh, after Coach Engineer spoke to the offense, Coach uh, John Robinson wanted to say some words. And me, me and Sadiq always talk about this. Uh, you know, like, when you're watching a football movie and this old coach, he go he gets up and he speaks and you hear the, the background music and it's just it's like an NFL films uh movie or, or something. So it, it just felt like that. And once when he was sitting he was standing up there talking and I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, bro, this feels like a movie. Like something something special about this. It didn't feel real. And it's just it's I still have chills just thinking about it. And that's when I knew like this season is special. And we, we're gonna we're gonna win the national championship. What were I mean? There's some obvious highlights. Obviously, winning a national championship, winning an SEC title. What were some of the maybe smaller highlights of the season that you really take pride in that you're gonna look back in with pride? Like one that comes to mind for me is obviously the Florida game. You made the yeah. the signs and put those in the locker. But what are some of those other smaller moments from throughout the season that really stick out to you? Uh, you, know, you just mentioned you know Florida game. Uh, that was. A personal week for the for the old line. I knew we had to you know step up big time in in order for us to to get a win against a talented team with a talented uh, defense. Um, but also, it's it's so many moments you can't really pick one. Uh, I mean, Texas game was was huge. That third and seventeen. Um, another moment. I don't, I don't really know. It's so many. I can't really think about it now, man. But. There's so many moments within that that season, man. Uh, the playoff game against Oklahoma, 
it just some was just some just felt right that whole week of preparation. I, I felt like we were gonna go out there and dominate. And it wasn't anything cocky. I know you know we made uh, waves in the media that you know we we seemed cocky, but that's we honestly felt like if we just executed, we would go out and dominate, and that's, that's what we did. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that y'all were cocky this year. There was a there was a confidence with this team that you know I've been been a, been a sports writer for nine ten years now. I've never seen the kind of confidence that y'all had that was, you know, you see confident teams, but they are a little bit braggadocious. They're going to tell you how good yeah. they are. Y'all never really did that. I mean, maybe if yeah. somebody asks you a specific question, you give them a specific answer that sounded overconfident. Um, but y'all just had this, like, this steadiness about y'all all year. Could could y'all sense that? Was that an intentional thing? Was that, like, someone in, in terms of leadership said, hey, this is how we're going to be? Or is that just the way that y'all developed? Yeah, it was just natural, and we had so much fun doing it. Like I remember so many weeks where I would, uh, you know, I would be thinking to myself, and I would say to Sadiq, like, "It's a Friday before you know the game, and we're playing around, we're shadow boxing, and when we're supposed to be serious, but at the same time, we know how to flip that switch and get serious when it's game time." So like, we were so confident, we, and we had fun doing it. It's just a natural thing. Uh, I think nobody, nobody really said anything about it. We just, we just went out and did it. I think it was either before the SEC championship game or the the playoff game where y'all were – it was in Georgia, and it was the walkthrough the day before. And mm-hmm. y'all were just so light and loose. Yeah. And I, I don't remember who I was talking to, but I just turned to him. I was like, they're going to roll tomorrow. Like, it's not even going to be close. It's going to be a blowout. Y'all just had that that sense about y'all all year. A lot of that obviously stemmed from Joe. When mm-hmm. When did you know that Joe – was going to have the season that he had. Because I, I think we – like, I remember before the season, you, Joe, and Grant came up to Bonnet's office for, like, media training with Tommy Karam, and I was sitting in there. And, you know, Joe's always been confident. He was giving yeah. some confident <laughs> – you know, he was, he, was, he was being confident. And I, I was like, all right, this guy's going to have a big year. But I didn't, I didn't expect that, like what he did. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Heisman and 60 touchdowns, all that stuff. When did, it, when did that become kind of the, the standard for you? When did you know that Joe was about to do yeah. what he did? Honestly, it started uh, the Fiesta Bowl uh, in 2018. Uh, I knew that next year, you know, with the, the talent we had coming back, uh, I knew it was going to be special. And then, you know, once again, in spring ball, when we were executing and we were just doing the things we were doing in practice, you know, you saw it. You saw it. And, you know, you, you also you – not, you not only saw, you know, the talent on the field and executing, but you saw just the confidence, you know, he had and that – it triggered down to everybody else on the offense. You know, uh, it's just the swag he he ca- he carried himself with the confidence, and you know, it, it, it you know carried on us. How cool was it for the Heisman Trophy, where you know he, he could go up there and say anything he wanted to, but the very first thing he said was to yeah. praise the offensive line. How how cool was that moment? Where were you? Like, wh- wh- who were you with, and what was your reaction? Yeah, that was a. 